Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This Bible study is going to be on the Christian duties of a spouse. I've pretty much covered the Bible duties of a husband in a previous study years ago, so this will mostly be about the Bible duties of a wife. Uh, tell you what, uh, it's going to be kind of an adult-themed thing. So, you know, because that's what we are. We're adults, and, uh, you know, it's not going to be X-rated, no. But um, we're going to discuss topics that are in the Bible. So let's get to work. Get out your King James Bible, and we're going to take a look. All right, let's take a look at this. In Colossians 3.19, Paul writes, Husbands, love your wives, and be not bitter against them. Did you know that a commandment of Paul to husbands is for husbands to love their wives? In Ephesians 5.25, we read, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. What did Christ give for his church? His life. A husband is supposed to love his wife enough that he is supposed to protect her with his own life. Think about that. So, let's take a look at some of the wives' responsibilities. In Ephesians 5.22, it says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your, unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Oh boy, nobody wants to hear that stuff, do they? Colossians 3.18 Wives, smit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. In Ephesians 5.24 Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Now, ladies, let me tell you, it's, you know, that's why it was so important in picking a partner. And, you know, it doesn't matter if a man's looking for a wife or a wife's looking for a husband. Uh, there's a, a saying that... Um, Men marry a woman hoping she won't change, and she does. And then mar women marry a man hoping they can change him, wanting to make him better, but he doesn't. So, you know, the thing is, if you marry somebody, don't expect them to change. If the way they are is not sufficient for you, then don't marry them. But once you marry them, especially if there's kids involved, oh, what a mess. Now, please believe me, I'm not an expert on uh, marriage and good relationships, no. I'm the expert on things not to do. That's me, the expert on things not to do. I destroyed my family as an unbeliever, uh, the only girl that ever loved me. 
so I'm an expert on doing things the wrong way and not God's way. Now, you got to understand something. Um, just like in the army, you've got the general who commands the colonel, who tells the major, who tells the captain, who tells the lieutenant, that tells the sergeant, that tells the private. And just that, like that, you've got God the Father, and then you have God, um, Jesus, God the Son, who's subject to the Father. And then you've got the Holy Spirit that's subject to Christ. And then you've got the church. And then husbands and then wives. And a lot of wives lose respect for their husbands because I guess you could say there if you you've probably heard it that guys have a one track mind. Well, when it comes to projects that require deep thought and to be focused on something, that's what guys are good at. And this is not to take away from women, but look at all the the majority of inventions have come from men. That's not to say women haven't invented things. Oh, they have. But when something requires deep thought and a one-track thing until getting a project done, that's what men are good at. And let's face it, and I know this for a fact, I have to give all my thought to get a project done. I am not good at multitasking. And that's something women are really good at. Women are excellent at multitasking. I've noticed that. Five or six things going on and, and they're on top of everything. I can't do that. I got to do a project, finish it, move to the next project, finish it, move to the next project, finish it. Women can work on five things at once. You know, uh, they're taking care of the house, they're taking care of the kids, uh, cooking something, shopping, you know. Let's face it, you gals are good at that, you know, but don't don't lose respect for your guy because the thing is, Adam was put on the earth for God's pleasure. And the woman was created by the Lord to be his helpmate. So, you know, there's a hierarchy, I guess you could say. You know, just like you, you go to the a business. You know, you've got the president, the CEO, and then you got the managers, and then you got the line workers. Well, that's, you know, you got... The husband's supposed to be head of the family and then the wife and then the kids. And it's the wife's duty to, to train the kids and to teach them in the admonition of the Lord. And you know what? It's rough when you get married to somebody and then one or the other of them gets saved and the other one doesn't, but you both got married as unbelievers. And I feel for you gals that came to the Lord later in life and you got an unbelieving husband, I feel for you. I really do. I, you know, trust me, I never wanted to, to get into ministry work. Never. I ran from it for many, many years because I knew, um, I won't say it's a burden, but I know that one day I'm going to have to give an account for everything that I've taught. And I really don't have any pleasures in life anymore. I really don't. Um, I don't consider, you know, I don't like to go out and drink and party anymore and go be with friends anymore. Of course, most of my friends dumped me when I came to the Lord because I wasn't... Uh, doing the things that they were doing anymore, things that dishonored the Lord. And, uh, you know, they separate from you. 
And those of you that are truly saved, you know what I'm talking about. So, you know, there's a, a hierarchy. And believe it or not, women are commanded to have reverence for their husbands. Let's take a look at that. In Titus 2.5, it says, uh, To be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Important. In Ephesians uh, chapter 5, verse 31, we read, verse 31, 531, For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. In other words, we don't want no mama's boys. Okay, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. What does reverence mean? Well, it's from the word revere. Uh, it, it has reference to honor and respect. You know, that's one thing sadly lacking today. Um, I have, I've had friends in the past that um, you'd go over to their house and their wives would treat a total stranger like somebody coming over to their house to repair something like, you know, an AC or something like that. And they actually showed they were actually nicer to them than the than the husband that they married i mean really you know and then they can't understand why the husband leaves you know your guy's not going to be perfect you're not perfect i'm not perfect the only perfect person that ever walked this earth was Christ Jesus. And uh, they crucified him. So, you know, yeah, your guy's going to have mistakes, make mistakes, and he's going to have his faults. You know, and, you know, you, you hope he's going to get better, but I don't know. It's, it's, it's a tough thing especially when you get married young and you both grow older. And I'll admit, women seem to be about five years ahead on the maturity cur curve. You take a guy that's about 30 years old, that's about when guys seem to actually mature. Um, I believe, if memory serves me correctly, even the Bible says that you, a man, a Levite, a man could not become a priest until he was 25. And that's when maturity starts kicking in. But you couldn't be a high priest until you were 30. And that's when pretty much full maturity kicks in. Uh, you take a guy that's about 25, 26, and a woman about 20 is about the same maturity level. I mean, I'll, I'll admit that. I have done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of weddings. Um, I did four weddings in one day. I did five weddings in a three-day weekend. And I probably did 45 to 50 weddings uh, every year average for, I don't know, seven or eight or nine years. But 95% uh, of the time, I talked to the brides. They were the ones that, you know, they knew what they wanted in a wedding. And they would call me and, you know, I would, talk to them and try to figure out, you know, what they wanted. And I got a pretty 
decent idea of how they think on along the lines of some things. If I could ever figure women out, I'll write a book and I'll be a multimillionaire, but uh, I don't think that's going to ever happen. That's a joke, people, uh, ladies. But um, I got a pretty good idea. But what's really, you know, the thing is, for example, women would get mad at their guys because sometimes they didn't want to help with the wedding planning. And I was good at wedding planning. I really was. Uh, matter of fact, the ladies taught me a lot. They found places for weddings, you know, gardens, settings for weddings. Uh, depends on, especially the ones on a lower budget that didn't want to spend, you know, $25,000 for a wedding. Small, intimate, low-cost weddings that were nice, you know. Did a lot of beach weddings. But, um, you know, I always try to encourage them, look, uh, if you want your guy to help, have him pick the hotel, have him get the limo, maybe the dinner reservations, those kind of things. You know, don't ask him to pick the the the, um, the decorations. That's a that's a lady thing. You know, he doesn't care if it's chartreuse or you know yellow or orange or blue. You know, he doesn't care. Those kind of things. You know the kind of flowers you want, you know. So give the guy things that he can do, you know, and because uh, the guy doesn't care what kind of flowers. And that holds true whether it's in a wedding or any other thing, you know. You ask the guy to help out, and he says, oh, I want you to help out with the uh, the flowers, you know, well, what do we know about flowers? Well, I know more than most because, you know, I've picked up a lot of flowers for weddings over the years. But he doesn't know what color you want. He doesn't know what style of flower you want. Give him jobs that he can do that you don't really care about. You know, do you care if it's a Cadillac or a Lincoln Continental for the limo? Probably not, you know. But that's just, you know, the thing. But the Bible says to show reverence for your husband. If you show respect for your husband, you'll you'll get it back in return. I'll guarantee you. And one of the worst things I've seen women do, a horrible thing. Well, an alternate... Uh, title for this could be how to keep your husband and keep him happy or how to get rid of your husband. Uh, one of the worst things you can ever do, which is not showing reverence, which is honor and respect, is go into your family, your girlfriends, and telling them every little mistake that he makes. You know, the thing is, if he treats you decent every day of the year and he forgets a birthday or maybe an anniversary or something, I mean, you're going to make his life miserable. I mean, he's probably got a thousand other things on his mind. Let me tell you something. Being a white male in today's world, uh, let me use a non-theological word. It sucks. I mean... Where I worked, this for the municipality that I worked for, that I was there for like 12 or 13 years, they didn't hire not one white person for a management job in my division. Not one. Matter of fact, they would go to foreign countries and hire them. Non-whites from foreign countries. I mean, there's a, there's a good chance he's got a miserable life at whatever job he's at, uh, chances are most of the bosses are miserable. And, you know, the last thing in the world he needs is to come home and hearing complaining about every little mistake that he's made 
for the last, well, as long as you've been married or even dating. But one of the worst things you could do is telling your family and stuff uh, all the mistakes he made. Yeah, he's going to make mistakes, and so are you. You know, I was uh, buddies with somebody, and uh, I was over at his house, and his sister came in. I think it was an old younger sister. I don't remember. This was a long time ago. But uh, she was crying that her worthless husband left her. And uh, the older brother, well, the brother, I think he was older. You know what the brother said? He said, good. I'm glad he grew a pair, if you know what I'm saying. And she was like aghast, you know, how can you say that? He's like, sis, you treated him like garbage. You know, really, you did. You know, I, I'm surprised he stayed with you as long as he did. And um, from what I understand, he um, ran off with some girl at work, you know. And let me tell you something. You got a guy that's been at a job for a long time and, and he knows, uh, you know, there's, there's girls out there that want married men uh, if they don't want a relationship, but they just want a guy to, how should I say, take care of business, you know, but they don't want a relationship, but they want a man to take care of them for whatever half an hour an hour here and there you know um there's women out there that love to hit on married men um i mean i had a job where i had just recently got married and a, nobody a, a girl at work had never paid attention to me but as soon as i got married i was surprised that she showed an interest in me um you know but i was too busy with my wife so and uh, you know it happens uh, and then there's other women out there that'll uh, you know they've worked with this guy for a long time and they see that he's nice to everybody he's pleasant uh, he's respectful to everybody and uh, and then when they see a chance an opportunity to take him from another girl that doesn't treat him very well sometimes they'll do it I've seen that happen more times than I can remember, you know. And that is, you don't, you don't want to give a guy an excuse, you know. And let me tell you something. If, when you treat your guy right, he's going to do the same for you. Um, and I've noticed, it's been my experience, and you can argue with me and disagree. That's fine. I mean, I'm not right about everything, I'm sure. I mean, I mean, uh, but the thing is, I think guys are generally more forgiving than women. Now, I've seen guys get into fist fights, and then an hour later, they're on the couch drinking a beer together, yelling at the TV because their sports team is uh, winning or losing or whatever, you know. Um, I... I've seen, now that's not obviously not true with all women, but I've seen women hold grudges for the rest of their lives. And you know what? Christ said about forgiveness? Oof. Let's take a look. In Mark eleven twenty six, Jesus said, But if you do not forgive, if you do not forgive, if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. Let me tell you something. I, I have to forgive those that have wronged me because I, I've wronged the Father a thousand times worse than what anybody ever did to me. You know? So you should forgive other people too now i'm not talking about i did a whole study on forgiveness i'm not talking about you know somebody that harms your child that you should forgive them and let them come back in your house to do it again uh-uh you can forgive them 
but not give him another chance to do the same thing. And uh, there are certain capital crimes that, yeah, oh, okay, you murdered somebody? I can forgive you for that, but guess what? The penalty for capital crime was death. Yeah, I'll forgive you, but you still have to die. I mean, that was, you know, so I'm not talking somebody who does something horrible to your child and, you no, know, give them another chance. I don't think so. But I'm talking about, you know, people do stupid things. I did a lot of stupid things as a teenager, a lot of stupid things that I'm not proud of. And uh, it'll all come out one day at the uh, judgment seat of Christ. Hopefully not the white throne judgment. But, uh, you know, learn to forgive. If your guy treats you good every day and he forgets an anniversary or something, but he treats you good all the rest of the year, you know, don't sweat the small stuff. Don't make his life miserable. It's really, it's really hard. Um, supporting a family nowadays, it's hard. The, uh, the evil ones, the children of the devil, they've made the tax burden so high that uh, generally both parents have to work then they want to stick your kid in a government indoctrination center that they call a school, public school, you know. I mean, when I was a little kid, uh, just a husband alone could work and make enough money to take care of a family. You know, you wouldn't get rich, but, you know, my mother didn't work. She took care of us, and boy, did I keep her busy. <sighs> but... Uh, you know, if if your guy doesn't drink too much and uh, doesn't beat you to death, you know, half to death and, and treat you decent all the, you know, times, try to be happy, you know. And don't go running to your family and complain about him with everything, you know, because it gets back to him and it, it's it's just not, what purpose does it serve? It's just going to make him resent you, you know. And let me try. Let me tell you something. You uh, put your arms around him and tell him, "Gee, look, you know, I'm sorry." Um, give him his favorite thing in bed. Uh, he'll uh, trust me. He'll, he'll forget all about everything that you might have done that made him mad. Trust me, it works. Well. Maybe with most most guys. I don't know. Then again, um, you might think you're up to something. You never know. I, you know, every, every individual is different. But um, one of the worst things, another one of the worst things you can do is uh, kicking him out of the house. Now, if he commits adultery, that's one thing. If he's physically threatening you and the kids, that's something. You know, I'm not talking about that. Just, you know, you have a fight and you say, look, you know, you call 911 and, and have the police come and say, I want him out of this house. That's, unless he's, you know, something, unless somebody's life is physically endangered or adultery or something like that, that's a dangerous thing to do. Let me tell you something. Because I've seen a lot of guys that um, they left the house or were forced out by the police. And they said, you know what? The heck with this. Like, I'm going to support, I'm going to pay for a house that I'm not even able to live in. Oof. And guess what? I've seen a couple times where um, girls at work saw this guy that, you know, they liked him. And then their wife kicks him out of the house. And then they say, you know, I, uh, then the girl at work says, you know what? Uh, I appreciated that time you gave me a, uh, a, a jump start with the battery. 
at, when my car wouldn't start and you helped me get home, you know what? Why don't you come? You can stay on at my on my couch while you're kicked out of the house. You know, and here's the guy that she's worked with for years. That's been very nice to everybody and respectful and you know. And she feels sorry for him. And next thing you know, um, they're uh, they're intimate. All because you wanted to get mad at him for some something that's not that important. I saw one guy, he got kicked out of the house because he wouldn't buy his wife a, a new Mercedes. He was I think he was a bank when I worked for the bank, like a manager. And uh, his secretary uh, heard about it and told him to, you know, she he had helped her when her husband had died, um, had an insurance policy, and she was in danger of losing her house because the insurance company was slow to pay because she lost her husband's income. And uh, he went to... Uh, call the insurance company you know here it is the bank has got this insurance company for a lot of employees and he bitched at them i guess you could say and uh they they paid and you know kept her from losing the house and then when he got kicked out of the house for you know sh i think she had like a two or three year old car mercedes nice mercedes but she wanted the you know newer model that one of her girlfriends or something had or maybe the, at the country club i don't remember all the details and he's like Are you nuts you know we're still paying on this other one and, and it's low mileage there's nothing wrong with it she booted him out this girl if if you want to talk about a good looking girl with looks um on a scale of one to ten she was probably eleven and a half but uh she probably married him for money and he probably married her for looks and let's face it gals a lot of times guys will marry a girl for their looks and a lot of times the gal will marry a guy for their money and that is not a match made in heaven trust me but she uh she kicked him out the secretary offered him uh, a place to stay uh, until he could get this all sorted out and uh, I think she had a little daughter, really nice kid from what I understand. And guess what? He, uh, he, never, he never went back home. He ended up getting divorced from this woman and married a secretary because he really liked the girl, the kid. And uh, he was like, you know, it's, it's just not worth putting up with this. I mean, really, you're going to call the police if nobody's if nobody's life in danger there's no reason to call the police and let me tell you something i've seen people have their kids taken away because the wife thought she was going to prove something to her husband and uh, call 911 and then you know police get involved and then child protective services show up and let me tell you something child protective services lose children all the time honestly i think they're part of a satanic uh ring either they put the kids into um, sexual slavery or satanic sacrifices but that's just my opinion there was one uh, case in georgia where they lost an average of two kids a day for a year and that's just one state they lost hundreds of kids missing. You know, do not call the cops to kick your husband out. I mean, it's just bad for business. Okay, what purpose does it serve? Another thing, too, if you want to get rid of your husband. Uh, one of the worst things a wife can do is cutting the husband off in the bedroom because she's mad at him what does the bible say about this first corinthians 7 4 the wife hath not power of her own body but the husband and likewise also the husband hath not power of his own body but the wife 
Now, I know feminists, the Jezebel spirit, will say, what am I? Am I my husband's sex slave? Well, let me ask you this question. Does his body belong to you? If the answer is yes, then his, her, your body belongs to your husband. But if you say, well, you know, I don't want to. Um, he's only going to get it when I want to. Well, if his body doesn't belong to you, does that mean he can go and share it with another woman when he feels like it? I mean, it works both ways. Either your body belongs to him and his body belongs to you, or he can share with somebody else. And I know how women can be stingy about that. I'm being, I'm being facetious there, people. But, uh, you know, that's a... Let me tell you something. You know, you could be mad at each other, but it's, it's not easy being mad at somebody when you just had an orgasm with them. It's not easy to be angry with somebody. Trust me. Well, I don't know. I, I'm just speaking from my own self. But, uh, you know, I told you it would be adult-themed. Well, it kind of is. But that's why the Bible says, uh, let me see if I can find it in the Bible. Uh, Ephesians 4.26 be, be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Um, in other words, don't go to bed angry. You know? And that's good advice. You know? Um, I've, I couldn't tell you the number of times I've seen guys leave their wives because the wife got mad at them and... Uh, wouldn't give them any anymore um, you know if you're sick or something like that that's one thing but just you know just to cut him off because he did something that you don't like or you're mad at him and you know well he's not getting any until he bends to my will um, sometimes that backfires you know I've you wouldn't believe the number of guys that I've seen that couldn't wait until the last kid turned 18 years old to divorce his wife. Uh, gals, let me tell you something. Guys are guys are simple. We're simple creatures. We really are. What was her name? Dr. Joyce or whatever. She was Jewish, but a lot of times I agreed with her. I used to listen to her when I was at work. Um... You know, eat, sleep, sex. That was basically, you know, what guys were, you know, especially when you're young. But, um, you know, take take a lesson from a dog. Have you ever, you ever been over to somebody's house that had a dog? Let me tell you something. Um, you, go, <laughs> you go to somebody's house... Uh, well, you, for those of you that have had dogs, what happens when you come home that your dog hasn't seen you for hours? Dog's jumping up and down, he, all happy to see you and loving all over you and, you know, giving you kisses and stuff. They're so, they're so happy that you're home. You know, they don't get mad, you know. I, you know, I've had dogs and they're just like that. Now, I knew a woman that... Um, she uh, was married, well, she was a, a woman from Thailand, nothing to do with me, uh, but she was married to some American guy, and um, she was complaining about her husband, to me, uh, about, what did she say? Oh, he loves that damn dog more than he loves me. And I replied to her, and those were her words, almost exactly. And I was like, no, you got it wrong. The dog loves him more than you do. And that's the truth. You know, you act like, you know, happy to see him when he comes home and you're all over him and just 
glad that he's home and spending time with him like the dog. Boy, I tell you what, you'll be, he'll never leave you. Never. Trust me. Um, I've met women that uh, from the moment the guy comes home till he goes to sleep, they were complaining and complaining and complaining. And then the guy gets fed up with it and he's, you know, after work he would just go to a bar and sit in the bar and get drunk and then wait until, you know, time when the wife would go to sleep and then he'd come home. And then she'd complain about that. Well, you know, who, who wants to come home to complaining all the time? You know? I mean, you know, but be like the dog. I tell you what, you... Your husband comes home and you greet him at the door with a kiss and a hug and say, I'm glad you're home. I've missed you. Uh, you think you think he's going to want to be at a bar or you think he's going to come home and be with you? Uh, simple question, right? And, you know, you're the one that's in charge of the house. You're the one that sets the pace. And like I say... Um, you know, we're simple creatures. We really are. And um, you ask for forgiveness, make him have some pleasure, he'll forget. He'll forget about everything in the past. He might look at you strange for a while and say, I wonder if she's up to something. You know, especially it's been a long-term thing where you've been having problems. But, uh, you know, like I say, you owe respect to your husband your husband is commanded to love you and, if necessary, give his life to protect you like Christ died for the church. Make him want to do it willingly. You know? And let me tell you something. I'm not a marriage counselor. I've told you, I'm the guy that knows all the wrong things to do because I did them. I mean, I, my family, my youngest daughter, I haven't seen or heard from her in well over 10 years. My oldest daughter, I haven't heard, seen her in probably five or six years, you know. And the only woman that ever loved me, she's gone. She, uh, she got tired of waiting for me to grow up and uh, met somebody else and there you go. So, you know, but uh, yeah, I'm an expert on doing the wrong things. But like I say, I did a lot of weddings. I know the expectations that women have. Um, you know, I've done a little bit of marriage counseling. But and I've, you know, when you're when you're in your mid 60s, you've seen a lot of things, you know, Unfortunately, I've seen a lot of people that I know they got married probably too young uh, for their maturity level. But the Bible does say, um, you know, the wife of thy youth. I honestly think God wanted us to get married at a very young age and, uh, you know, raise families. But it's it's a big responsibility. You know, that's why I say, try to try to work as a team you know uh, he's going to make mistakes and so are you you know don't run to your family and tell him every mistake he did because that's going to get back to him um, you know especially when the mother-in-law goes to him and says well why did you do this to my daughter that's not that's not productive for a, uh, a marriage trust me it's not, you know, should never get family members involved unless it's something really serious. You know, if he beats the kids to a pulp, that's that's one thing, you know, but uh, hopefully you don't ever marry somebody like that, you know, but I'm an expert on uh, doing the wrong things, like I say. Oh. <sighs> And please, if you got children, don't, uh, you know, if the husband says one thing, 
correct for the kids. Don't belittle your husband in front of the kids or, you know, openly challenge him. That's not, that's not productive. Um, I knew a guy that was married to a woman. They had kids and then they were getting to be like teenage years or whatever. And uh, the father didn't want the kid, the boy going out and, you know, getting drunk and messing around, whatever, chasing the girls or whatever. He wanted them home at a certain time. And uh, the wife's like, well, you know, you used to do that with me, you know, so let him go have his fun. You know, the, the wife was trying to be, I guess, like a, a pal to her son more than a mother. But um, then when the daughter started wanting to do the same things and stay out late and do the same type of stuff that the boy was doing, well, that created problems, uh, you know. And I don't remember. I think it was the father. He was concerned, you know, the daughter getting pregnant or, you know. Because let's face it, um, when you start getting drunk, you do some stupid stuff. Uh, like I say, I'm an expert on doing stupid stuff. Expert. I can, I can, on a scale of one to ten, I'm about a nine and a quarter. Yeah. And no Bible study would be complete without reading Proverbs 31. Who can find a virtuous woman? And when we're talking virtue, we're talking spiritually and physically. I, I hate to admit it, but I doubt I seriously doubt if you went to a high school and found a hundred white girls, I doubt if you could find three to five that were virgins by the time they graduated from high school. That's what, that's virtue, you know? And um, uh, it's just, it's sad. You know, that's what God wanted. A man and a woman to be virgins on their, till their wedding night, but... Tch. Yeah, that's not today's society. No. So who can find, uh, Proverbs 31.10, who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her. You know what? Your husband has to trust you, and you have to trust him. Times are going to get bad, people. Things are going to get bad. You're going to have to, he's going to have to be able to trust you with his life, and you have to trust him with your life. You know, it's hard, especially when one's a believer and the other one's not. But, um, you know, the Bible says a soft answer turns away wrath. Um, you know, being confrontational doesn't work. Um, you know, should lead by example. If you've got a uh, an unbelieving husband, lead by example. And when the opportunity arises, you know, but don't complain to him that, yeah, he's supposed to be the spiritual leader of the house. And I feel for you gals that don't have that because I know, well, I shouldn't say I know a lot of you, but I know of a lot of you. So... The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax, and worketh willingly with her hands. Yeah, she helps being a breadwinner, right? She is like the merchant ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field, and buyeth it, and with the fruit of her hands she planteth a vineyard. She's not sitting around reading uh, filthy magazines and watching soap operas, getting her ideas of the world from the devil's children. And I'm not speaking figuratively, people. She considereth a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. 
she perceiveth that her merchandise is good, her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor, yea, ye re she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. Uh, case in point, remember, uh, what was it, King David was running away from King Saul, and uh, I forget the name of the woman, but she was married to uh, Nabal, which means fool. And David and his men protected his property, and um, they asked him for some provisions. Now, this was King David that had defeated Goliath and protected Israel from being slaves to the Philistines. And this guy was wealthy beyond all belief. And David and his men asked this guy for some food. And he, rebu you know, he rebuffed them. He's like, oh, pff, who's David? Uh, David's the guy that kept you from being a slave to the Philistines, you idiot. And David and his men were, they were totally disgusted and they grabbed their swords, and they were on the, the way to kill this guy. I think it was Abigail. And when she heard about it, she says, Oh my God, this my husband's a fool. Uh, she grabbed bread and, and wine and, and uh, fruits, and she went out to meet David, and she bowed herself to him and laid all the food out that she had laid on the animals. And, you know, she gave him a soft answer and turned away his wrath. And, um, you know, and guess what? When she told her husband what she had done, uh, the Lord struck him down dead. And then she became David's wife. I think it was Abigail. But, um, you know, you wives have a lot of power. You really do. You know, and a husband's not supposed to be a dictator. You know, I know that. And he should never do any kind of a business deal if you're not comfortable with it. You know, if he wants to get into a partnership and, you know, I have a lot of respect for a woman's intuition. I really do. Uh, when she says, mm, yeah, I, you know, I just don't trust this guy, you know. And my dad had dogs, too. And uh, if one of his dogs didn't like somebody or the wife didn't like somebody, he didn't like, he, no matter what he felt, he, he would trust uh, the wife, my mother, and, and the dog. You know, intuition, trust, I, I have a lot of respect for that. But, uh, you know, something major, you should both agree on something. But, you know, minor things, let him run with it. He's the head of the house. Let him go. Um, verse 20. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. And that's what Abigail, I think, did with David. David was in need. Verse 21. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for her household are clothed with scarlet. Scarlet was the color of royalty. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates where he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth, she openeth her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue is the law of kindness. Let me tell you something, people. You show kindness to your husband, he'll show kindness to you. Trust me. Her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. Beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. You know, you might be the most beautiful woman in the world, but 
40 years later, what are you going to look like? You know? Beauty is vain. Um, and you know what? Try to win your husband with your conversation if he's an unbeliever. Try. In 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 1, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may be without the word, be won, be won by the conversation of the wives. Yeah, I think I've covered pretty much all the things, you know, you probably didn't like all my stories, but, you know, uh, you know, and trust me, there are women out there that absolutely love married men. Um, I met one when I was going to college. I was working and going to college and, uh, she would uh, she would purposely go after married men, and I was kind of interesting uh, interested in to her mindset. And um, I don't remember probably all the details, but she goes, "Well, you know, reason I like married men." And she was very open about it. One, they have experience. You know, let's face it. Um, you know, husband should know how to take care of a woman. Because um, let's face it, if if he's done before you, you're not going to get done unless you get an electrical device to help you out. Um, told you this would be adult themed. You know, so, you know, and ladies, let me tell you, you shouldn't be afraid to talk to the guy you married and tell him what you like. I mean, I've noticed that about women. They don't like telling a guy what they like. I mean, tell him. You know, if you like something, tell him. Tell him to make sure you're done first. It's important. You know, instead of going to your girlfriends and saying, oh, well, he doesn't, you know, he should know what I like. Well, you know, we don't read minds, you know. But she liked married men because, one, they're experienced. She says, too, um, basically, um, she didn't want a guy that hadn't had any in six months and is in a hurry to be done. No, she, she was like, oh, I want a guy that's going to, you know, take his time and let me enjoy myself. Um, she, did, she didn't want a guy that, uh, she says, I don't like single guys because on the third date, I don't want this guy telling me how he loves me. No, you don't know me. You don't love me. You just love what's going on when you're in the bedroom with me. You know, she says, no, I, I want a guy to come over, take care of me, and then kick you out. Go home to your wife. You know, I don't want a relationship. She was also working and going to school. She She's like, I don't have time for a relationship. I don't want a guy to come over and have to entertain him, cook for him, clean. No, I just want a guy to come over, take care of me, go home, you know, and, uh, you know, that's, that's what, uh, I can't remember all the details, but uh, she actively went after married guys, and um, I kind of blew my, I blew my chance with her when I told her that I was separated from my wife, she wasn't interested anymore, I guess the Lord was, uh, I wasn't a believer back then, but uh, yeah, but I remember that. I was kind of interested interested in uh, her mindset. There was a girl I knew at work. She was my boss, and uh, she there was a a guy that uh, well, she was sitting at a desk, and this is kind of adult themed. So if you're offended, turn it off now. But he would come into the desk to sign in. And there was usually two of us in the desk um, every morning. We were at the, the gate. I'd hurt my back, and I was doing, like, security-type work. Um, so she's sitting at a desk. He's walking in. Eye level to her is 
his belt level, if you catch my drift. And uh, she noticed every morning he'd come in with a bulge, if you catch my drift. And uh, she was not a very particularly good-looking woman. She was heavy. Um, and, uh, you know, so this, she's noticing this every day for, I don't know how long, probably weeks. And uh, she made a little small talk with him and stuff. And then one day she, uh, I was like outside the window or whatever, and I hear him ta her talking, and she was like, um, you know, whatever his name was, can I ask you a personal question? And he goes, sure, go ahead. She says, are you insatiable or is your wife not taking care of you? And I imagine he was probably a little bit embarrassed, but, um, you know, he didn't really answer. He kind of like nervous laughed it off, but uh, she started chasing after him. And she did. She chased after him for weeks. And then finally he uh, broke down and then went over to her place and he uh, took care of her business, if you know what I mean. She didn't have a boyfriend. And uh, sometimes we would carpool because it, uh, it was on the other side of town, the job. And, you know, uh, so I would carpool with her sometimes and then Sometimes he would show up or whatever um, if I met her at her place. And uh, so one day he was uh, walking her dog or something. And uh, I was walking with him or something. I don't remember exactly what. But uh, I asked him, I says, you know, you're married and you got kids. How come you're with this girl? You know? And he says, well... He says, my wife's a Catholic. I says, okay. He says, well, her method of birth control is to just say no. And uh, she would only take care of him when the times when she couldn't get pregnant. So that was like, I don't know exactly the rhythm method or whatever they call that. But it was like only like a week, a month. So for three weeks, he didn't get any. I think he had like three, four, or five kids. And he had a good job. He was like an engineer. He was making pretty good money. But, um, you know, she chased him around um, until one day he said, you know what, my wife's not taking care of me and this girl wants to. Is that really cheating? In his mind, it wasn't because his wife wasn't taking care of him. She didn't want him, whatever, three months, three weeks out of a month or however, whatever it works, I don't know. At least that's what he told me. I don't know if it's even true. Um, but, you know, that's why I say it's it's a dangerous thing to cut your husband off. So, you know, what can I tell you? But um, I hope, I hope that, you know, you're praying for your husband because um, things are, you know, I totally anticipate this country and the economy collapsing by the, this is May 22, when I'm doing this Bible study, uh, marriage counseling. By the time we come out of this uh, stupid quarantine, um, I totally anticipate a lot of businesses closing, a lot of people losing their jobs, and the government is just printing money like crazy. Uh, the money is just not going to be worth anything. You know what? Let me tell you what. When I, in, in the 90s, early 90s, when Clinton was president, I was getting wheat berries for about 12 to 16 cents a pound. Now the same thing is dollars, several dollars because they're just printing money. And that's what inflation is. Inflation is the value of the money going down. It's not the price. It's not the, the amount of money that, you know, uh, the cost of the goods going up. No, it's the dilution of the money's value going down. And yes, I took economics and business college, and I'm not getting paid by the rocky 
Feller Foundation to lie to you. I have no reason to lie to you. I have nothing to sell you. I'm not begging you for donations. So things are going to get bad. I think a lot of people are going to be out of work. You're going to need your husband and your husband's going to need you. Reconcile yourselves if, if, if at all possible. Hopefully it's not beyond the point of no return, I guess you could say. And people, God hates divorce. He really does. You know? I mean, you know, if, if you can't get along with your husband and you want to be the head of the household, there's a good chance that the Lord's going to look at that and say, oh, you're not going to like my kingdom. You know? Think about it. If you can't get along with your own husband and you won't let him be the house of the head of the household are you going to let christ be the head of your life too i mean i know the jezebel spirit is is very strong and you know i've done so many stupid things uh, my life's not perfect i've done so many dumb things even as a believer so you know, just just advice. And you know what? Your your life's not going to be compared to my life. Our lives are going to be compared to Christ, where we all fall short of the glory of God. We all do. But things are going to get bad, you know, and you've got to be able to trust your husband, and he's got to be able to trust you with each other's lives. I mean... Uh, by the time all these businesses uh, that are going to go bankrupt and there's not going to be jobs and the money's going to be worthless, um, things are going to be tough. And let me tell you something. There's a thing called the Noahide Laws. And look into it. N-O-A-H-I-D-E. And they're on the books in the United States. They're just not being enforced but when they start enforcing these laws, the New Testament's going to be illegal and every Christian can be put to death. Oh, really, Bob? You're crazy? No, I'm not crazy. Look it up, people. It's hidden in plain sight. You know? It really is. You're going to need your husbands. All these women that have Jezebel spirits that kick their husbands out, uh, if there starts, you know, if the economy collapses and there, you know, it, this is when the economy collapses, it's not a question of if it's when, um, back during the depression, during the thirties, people had respect for each other. They stood in soup lines. They're not going to do that now. They're going to grab whatever they can for a weapon and they're going to kill other people to take what they have. They're animals. Most people are animals. And if you live in a big city, it's going to be insane. Um, you know, trust me, people. Ladies, you're going to need your husband. Be reconciled to him if, if it's at all possible. If he hasn't done a capital crime or endangered your lives or uh, try your best to be reconciled, you're going to need him. He's going to need you, you know. And if you can, if you can't forgive him for something not major, maybe God the Father won't forgive you either. You know, Christ was very adamant about forgiveness. You know, very adamant. Look at the book. Uh, look at Joseph. Joseph's uh, brother sold him into slavery. And yet he forgave them. You know, I've, I've, I've almost had tears in my eyes reading about Joseph. That is, and Joseph was like Christ's forgiveness toward us. And if Christ can forgive us, surely we can forgive others. Um, 
You know, that's that's the only advice I can give you. And like I tell you, when it comes to ruining families and marriage, I'm an expert. I know. And I've seen it, people. You know, I've been on this earth for over 60 years. I've I've seen a lot. Especially the wrong things. You know, how many I've I've met so few people that have been married for 30, 40, 50 years. I've done vow renewals for people that have been married uh, 50 years, but they're few and far between. You know, strive for that. And ladies, take a lesson from the dogs. Trust me, it works. You know, I love going on, every time I feel kind of depressed, I'll go on YouTube and look up a, you know, um, dog's owner comes home. The dog's jumping up and down, all happy and excited, you know. That, that's, you know, or puppy attack, you know. It's kind of hard to be depressed when you got a dog um, that loves you to death. Take a lesson from that dog. You can learn a lot, you know, really. Well, I hope you didn't get mad at me, you know. I'm just telling you from a guy's point of view, you know. That's all I can do. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world, and His Father, God the Father. <sighs> Amen.